In this presentation, we will be analyzing the progression of two recent conjunctions. I'd first like to acknowledge my co-authors, Dan Otragi and I, you're both from the Center for Space Standards and Innovation. Holger Krag and Klaus Mertz are from the European Space Agency. Bob Hall is the Technical Director for SSA at the Commercial Space Operations Center, or COMSPOC. I would first like to thank the people and organizations on this slide. First, we looked at the Aeolus Starlink conjunction that occurred last September. Both satellites were maneuverable, predicted to come with about 300 meters, relatively high probability of collision. Based on these factors, Aeolus performed an emergency evasive maneuver. Next, we studied the IRS ggse 4 conjunction that occurred earlier this year. Both satellites were dead and predicted to come within about 14 meters with a very high probability of collision. Fortunately, no collision occurred. For the dimensions and masses, we accessed the DISCOS database provided by the European Space Agency. We needed raw observational data. It was provided to us by the 18th Space Control Squadron and then processed by the Commercial Space Operations Center. For probability and debris computations, we used the European Space Agency's DISCOS database to get dimensions and mass. With this information in hand, we used the PC topology tool to assess and display missed distances and associated probabilities leading up to the conjunction. We also used the Debbie Collision Explosion Fragmentation tool to estimate numbers, sizes, masses, velocities, and directions of the debris pieces that might have resulted from a collision. And then we used the Number of Encounters Assessment tool to compare collision estimates for the public space catalog with and without debris. It's become common practice to approximate spacecraft hard body with an encapsulating sphere with a diameter as the square root of the sum of the satellite's dimension squared. This one shape fits all approach has both advantages and disadvantages. It eliminates the need to know a satellite's orientation because the sphere viewed from any angle is a circle of the same diameter. The disadvantage to this approach is that it overestimates the object area, resulting in an overinflated probability calculation. To address this, we use satellite's dimensions to define a rectangular box. We then surround that box with equally spaced viewing points. Not knowing the satellite's orientation, we provide the full spectrum of projected areas from all possible viewing points. The user is then free to choose a suitable range of orientations for area. Conservatively, one would choose the maximum. As shown in this figure, an encapsulating sphere is the smallest sphere that touches all eight corners of the satellite's dimensional box. The sphere contains a good bit of empty space. By using the encapsulating sphere to model a satellite, that density in the empty space will be included in the probability calculation, resulting in an overinflated probability. As specified by the DISCOS database, you see all the data here for the ALS rectangular box. Its minimum dimension is under 10, minimum area is under 10, maximum area is 60 meters squared, and uh, av average at the 50% viewing point is 43 meters squared. Again, the 60 meters squared is far less than 149.3 meters squared of the projected encapsulating sphere. We use the same approach to maximum projected or Starlink rectangular box will be 30 meters squared. Knowing the projected area, we can use chance method to include a cross-sectional area to examine different shapes and their associated probabilities. For comparison purposes, we looked at three basic shapes, circles, squares, and rectangles. To simplify the probability computations, we align the axes with the major and minor axes of the combined covariance. The PC circle is a double integral, no analytical solution. In our paper, we reference many numerical techniques to adequately approximate this. When considering the rectangular square, the PC rectangle uses error functions, so it does have an anal analytical solution. Knowing the projected orbit positions, their covariances, and the various representations of object sizes, we can evaluate the probabilities. We then displayed the computational results in several ways. First is to create a table of values over time. The second is to use the PC topology tool. This table shows a public evolution of this conjunction starting three days before the close approach. As observational data is updated, the computations are reevaluated using the maximum projected area for the area shapes. For comparison, we also show the encapsulating sphere probabilities. That, those probabilities are about two and a half times greater than that of the maximum projected area. Again, the probability density in the sphere's empty space is included in the calculation, causing the inflation. It is our recommendation because of this that rectangular box approach be used instead of the common practice of encapsulating spheres. For completeness, we've also included a table corresponding to the minimum projected area. In this case, as you can see, the estimates range from a two and a half to 31.5 times overestimate, uh, depending on viewing angle. The previous data tables show only probabilities. Other tables can be created to show other things like missed distance or conjunction characteristics. Many of these can be displayed simultaneously using the PC topology tool. The tool creates an HTML file to depict the three-dimensional interactive figure, showing the relationship between probability, covariance size, and missed distance for the object size and shape. 
Two big advantages of this. The first is that the topology can be viewed with any web browser. The second is that such a file is easily distributed among any and all organizations and analysts, and there's no need for special software. As will be demonstrated, the tool allows the user to explore the time evolution of conjunction data. The user has the ability to reorient, zoom in and out, hover the pointer, simultaneously see probabilities, and other data. This slide shows a screenshot of the ALS Starling Conjunctions PC topology. The legend on the right reveals the data's representation. Let's take a look at the PC topology tool. The PC topology tool displays all the probabilities, missed distances, and covariance scalings on a single axis. It also shows where the calculations fall relative to the dilution region. Starting here, emanating from the yellow line is the very first oldest piece of data. Moving along on the blue lines, that shows the sequence. If you hover over one of these orbs, it gives all the data. If you hover over the top of the rectangular green areas, it shows the maximum for the rectangle and the minimum projected area probabilities for the rectangle. You see that there are four in the dilution region, which is to the right of this probability ridge line. And also we can display the PC threshold, which in this case was 10 to the minus fourth, that's the translu translucent blue plane right there. And you can see that almost all of them were above that plane, except for the very first one. The ESA maneuver threshold was a uh, probability collision greater than 10 to the minus four. The topology showed that the encapsulating spheres PC consistently remained above 10 to the minus four. It was about 10 to the minus three one hour prior to conjunction. Even the rectangle Rectangular box's max area PC was above ESA's threshold one hour prior. Based on this analysis, ESA's decision to perform an emergency maneuver was justified. Fortunately, no collision occurred. Had the collision occurred, how might it have affected the various orbit regimes? The debris based on intercepts and explosions, or DEBI tool, was used to model the ensemble of debris fragments that could have been generated. To do this, we gathered mass estimates and assumed a 30% direct mass involvement in the collision by Aeolus and a 20% involvement by Starlink. Under these conditions, it was estimated that almost 11,000 fragments larger than one centimeter in characteristic length could have resulted. We then used the Number of Encounters Assessment Tool, or NEAT, to compare collision estimates for the public space object catalog with and without this debris. We estimated that the annual collision rates down to one centimeter in size could have grown by a factor of eight in certain low Earth orbit regimes. Using this methodology, we also examined the iris ggse 4 conjunction. Due to ggse 4s long protruding boom, its encapsulating sphere contained a great deal of empty space. The encapsulating sphere's empty space resulted in greatly inflated probabilities when compared to the rectangular box's maximum area. As seen in this conjunction's topology, the ggse 4s elongated boom resulted in almost three orders of magnitude variability for the rectangular box probabilities. Encapsulating sphere probabilities remained greater than one in 10, throughout the analysis with no estimates in the dilution region. The Debbie collision and explosion fragmentation tool was again used in combination with the number of counters assessment tool. Adopting a 30% involvement and a mass of a uh, little over 1,000 kilograms by iris and 20% involvement and a mass of 85 kilograms by GGSE4, we estimated that over 12,000 pieces of debris would have been created. The resulting annual collision rate would have grown by a factor of about eight in the 900 kilometer altitude regime. In summary, we have examined two fairly high-risk conjunction events that occurred this past year using high-accuracy ephemeris from the CompSpoc, which was derived from advanced analytical data uh, and fusion of SSN and CompSpoc observations. Fortunately, neither of these potential fragmentation events occurred. In our first conjunction case, we found that the collision risk was high and remained high through the whole conjunction assessment sequence, warranting an avoidance maneuver. In the second conjunction case, we found that collision risk was also quite high, although it was highly dependent upon the orientation of the gravity gradient stabilization experiment spacecraft relative to the encounter plane. Such close approaches are regu a regular occurrence in space operations. Perhaps a more significant highlight of this and previous research is just how sensitive collision probability metrics are to object shape and orientation, with the gravity gradient boom highlighting the critical need for more sophisticated collision probability techniques for encompassing box shapes gathering and crowdsourcing of object dimensions and attitude rules and generation of cumulative density function depictions of collision probability as a function of its aptitude with respect to the encounter plane. These features have now been incorporated into the PC topology tool, which proved quite useful in visually depicting the evolution of collision risk. These issues will become more important as we continue into the new space era, putting further emphasis on better data analytics and space data sharing and the use of advanced SSA and SDCM systems.